Hello, today let's dive into efficient local development with Adobe App Builder. I will show you the difference between two AIO commands, AIO App Dev and AIO App Run, and how to use them. In previous videos, we've used the AIO command, a powerful tool that we will continue to explore, of course, in future videos. But right now, it is important to know that AIO provides everything needed for efficient development, management and deployment of our apps. The AIO CLI offers a ready-to-use development server with zero configuration, secured by a self-signed certificate, plus we get hot reload, all with no extra setup required. Alright, we've already used these comments in previous videos, but now it is important to understand their basic concepts and differences to stay aware of what's happening and make better decisions. So firstly, let's take a look at the difference for the SAP frontend. Both AppDev and AppRun commands build and serve the app on localhost and all available actions are saved into config.json file located in the WebSRC SRC directory. However, with AIO AppDev, the config points to local actions while AppRun points to actions deployed to Adobe Runtime. For actions, AIO App Dev builds and runs actions locally, but with AIO App Run, the code is deployed again to Adobe Runtime. For logs, since the dev command runs everything locally, we get direct access to logs, whereas with the run command, logs are pulled to our terminal. And the best feature, in my opinion, is hot reload, which really boosts the developer efficiency. Both commands offer this feature, but with dev it's almost instant since actions are local and with run actions have to be rebuilt and redeployed, making the process a bit slower. So now you might wonder why we need both commands. They offer flexibility in how you work with your apps depending on your needs, but they also come with some restrictions. For example, um, there are storage libraries that have security restrictions that prevent calls from outside of runtime actions. This means that if your action requires state or files libraries, it will fail with the AIO app dev. And the same may actually apply to some third-party APIs with similar restrictions. So we've covered the theory, now let's see both commands in action. Alright, so let's run the AIO app dev firstly. This will build our application locally and once it's done, it will print all the URLs that we have configured. So firstly, we have the URL for the SAP application and then also we can see this application in the Experience Cloud Shell and then we have web actions uh, depending on what you configured in the app config yam. So we have only two at the moment and then we have direct access to logs because this is um, connected to our local environment. So all the logs are configured and actually displayed in our terminal. So now because we used Postman and we configured Postman in previous video, let's use it again and let's actually create a local environment so we can uh, send requests to our local host generic action. So let's open Postman. So here is the generic action that we configured and it's pointing to the um, runtime action. So let's go to environments, let's create new local host environment with the URL variable a URL and then initial value will be the local host. Let's just copy this from here. Make sure that you do not have this enter uh, sign there. So let's just save it. You should um, see it here. And then, um, and then actually we can go to the generic request, change it to local host. And here you can notice that uh, we do not have this EMS organization. So uh, the difference also that I didn't mention before, uh, the difference between app run and app dev is that with app dev on our local host, uh, we do not need to have actually the token, uh, authorization token specified and IMS organization also. So if you run it right now, you can see that we have the hello world. So the custom action was executed, even though we have, if we go here, require Adobe Auth enabled, right? So for localhost, it works this way that you just simply need to specify, we can make, make it actually empty. It is important just to specify this header and also specify the bearer token. But if we, for example, change it 
so let's leave it for example only a as a character so if we use it right now it will also uh, work ah, okay so it cannot be empty but it can be just uh, gibberish so if we just send it it will work but of course if you right now change it to our stage environment and we send the same request it will return an error all right so that is clear right now let's uh, get back to our local host let's send this request again so we can see that it is returning hello world and if we get back to our web store and we go to the generic index action we can right now see the hot reload so let's change it to hello world from generic action for example and here in our logs we can see there is a hot reload so um, there is an info log um, index uh, generic index JS has changed building action and then build was successful for generic so if we get back to postman and we execute this we should see it like immediately um, the change in the text and lastly if we get back to our uh, web storm and we go to web src src directory there is a config json that is not added to our git of course but here we can see that we have um, that it generated those two actions with the urls and it is actually used by the sap so if we get back if we actually go to components to action forms right we have them um, so if we actually to, to, to show you we have the your app actions here is the form with the select an action so this actually input is taking the data from the config json and if we open the all actions variable here right this will actually uh, show us that it's imported from the config json and if we run aio app run right now under the hood there is a build of the uh, application and it is actually deployed uh, to our runtime action in app builder so once it is done we can see that again our local application our like sap is still running on localhost but right now if we reopen the config json it is right now pointing to the adobe's runtime so this way we can go again to localhost but um, this action will no longer send a request to localhost it will send a request to the runtime action and if we open uh, the index json again and le okay let's go to postman let's uh, send a request uh, to stage so let's uh, change it to ims organization we need to clean it up and also the app builder token we need to get back to the previous state so right now if we send this request we will see the hello world from generic action as expected but now if we change it for example to uh, one plus whatever um, this is under the hood again rebuilding the application and redeploying to the uh, runtime so if we right now send this request again uh, we will probably still see the generic Okay, so actually we can already see that there is a change and last time that I checked it was actually slower but we can see that actually it works pretty great as well so let's maybe give it one more time or uh, one plus one is two let's save it and let's send one more request okay let's send one more okay so actually it also fast lastly I want to quickly cover activation record and I haven't mentioned that before because firstly I would like to show you a quick overview of what it is and then what is the difference when we run app dev and app run so here on this page you can read more but here is a quick overview so in app builder an activation record is a detailed log of an actions execution and it includes the actions unique id uh, the unique identifier namespace and action name logs if any response and um, other informations so it gives us a built-in detailed insights about request sent to actions but note that only unsuccessful requests are locked so the main difference with logs and activation records is that with AO app dev no activation records are stored and the logs cannot be forwarded to any external tool with AO app run however activation records are stored and logs can be forwarded and one more important note uh, the activation ttl time to live is seven days and this is a system setting not a user setting so it cannot be changed by developers so please remember that and how we can work with um, activations we can actually simply use aio cli let's see how to do it we can simply run aio 
runtime activation list to see all the activations that are available in our workspace. And for example, we can right now go and uh, get a specific data about the last one. So let's open the last activation that we can see. And here we can see we have a JSON with some metrics like um, cost by path, wait time, uh, timeout, limits, and also an error that was written in our request. So right now, if we go to Postman and if we, for example, re uh, remove the uh, organization, we should get an error. As you can see, we have an error. And if we go, uh, we can list again activations and we should see a new uh, activation. Exactly, we have a new ID. So if we go and run it, we can see uh, also actually missing uh, EMS organization ID header. And we can also run logs to see uh, logs for this particular activation. So this is a powerful tool that can help us to actually get some insights about our errors in our runtime actions. That would be all for this video. I hope you are now better equipped for efficient local development in Ampilder. And if you found this helpful, be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. Thanks for watching and see you in the next lesson. Thank you.